Good afternoon, everybody. Brian Wasser here. Uh, I'm kind of unfortunately here to address an issue that's become kind of apparent, uh, at least at one of my institutions. Um, this isn't going to be a free form uh, kind of lecture or to talk. It's, I'm going to be reading a letter that I'm uh, sending out to the Westchester Quad, which is the student run organization on campus. It's titled On Viewpoint Diversity A Dire Warning from an Old Gay. Something funny happened recently that I feel to be worth sharing with other students, both on campus and across the country. As per my norm, I was excited when I received an email from the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion about their plans for the upcoming WCU Celebrates Diversity for All series of events. In the past, the school has done wonderful things regarding issues of diversity, such as bringing Jonathan Rauch on campus a few years back, an event that was of supreme interest to me both as a member of the gay demographic and as a staunch advocate for freedom of speech and expression, as well as the freedom, that freedom's implicit responsibility. However, upon opening the PDF describing this year's events, I was dismayed, you know, shocked, by the fundamental and conspicuous lack of diversity on the schedule. Not from a demographic perspective, different ethnic, gender, and sexuality categories are all appropriate, rep, appropriately represented, but from the perspective of ideological or viewpoint diversity. I immediately wrote to one, Mr. Hiram Martinez, uh, if he happens to hear this, I apologize if I've screwed that up, about the issue in hopes of understanding how such a thing could occur, especially in the year 2020. For instance, I brought up the issue of Dr. Angela Davis, who will be the keynote speaker at the Multicultural Conference at Ruby Jones Hall. It should be noted that one can argue that Dr. Davis is one of the most polarizing and inflammatory speakers of the contemporary left wing. That in itself isn't a problem. In fact, I welcome the chance to attend such lectures, if only because I disagree with her and others who hold her positions on so many topics and seek to expand my horizon of understanding through well-intentioned dialogue, to borrow the Gadamerian notion. However, I made it clear that as best as I could tell, there was little to nothing scheduled in the way of discussion from centrist, right-wing, or any non-social justice-aligned ideological perspectives to balance speakers such as Davis out. For a school that prides itself on inclusivity and diversity, this, to me, is unacceptable. Effectively, what events such as these do as an unintentional abdication of the pursuit of greater truth is add to the ideological homogeneity of the academy, thus depriving our students and faculty of the well-rounded experience they will need to be a truly effective force in the world as such. I made it clear to Mr. Martinez that I was curious how the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusivity planned on rectifying this issue, and if they had no plans on doing anything of the sort, I wanted to know why. I think it is reasonable to suggest that we cannot claim to be a diverse and inclusive institution if we participate in the sort of Marcusean repressive tolerance when it comes to students who may or may not fit into the typical literal, uh, excuse me, liberal student mold. As of the writing of this text, or recording of this video, there has been no response regarding the matter. No lip service from the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusivity, Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusivity about their respect for ideological or viewpoint diversity, not even some boilerplate auto-response from the office proclaimed to care about the issues of the student body. Our institution seems to be at a loss for words regarding the issue, or maybe they just don't care. When presidential candidate Joe Biden suggested that the country is in the battle for the soul of the nation who is right, and is and continues to be right, as much as it pains me to agree with that man. Fellow students and academic professionals, we are at a crossroads. Recently, a fellow gay student and close friend of mine was doxxed for simply holding different views on specific key topics than members of the orthodox position on campus, an act I feel can only really be attributed to the aforementioned homogeneous, no, homogeneous environment of academia. Similarly, in discussions with other students, I've been labeled a non-ally and self-hating homophobe for simply attempting to hold my community, the gay community, accountable for its faults and failings, of which there are many. Is this who we are? Is, is this what we do now? Tear down people who hold reasonable beliefs that differ from our own? I refuse to accept that as the reality of the situation. I've been a golden ram since 2015, January 2015 to be specific. I received my undergraduate degree and my graduate degree from that institution. We've always been an institution where coming to understanding has been a priority, where the pursuit of truth, and that's the operative phrase, the pursuit has always provided a continuity of purpose for the, for the educative body. The Office, of Diversity, uh, in, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusivity, I hate this acronym, it's annoying to say, and ostensibly the institution itself seems to have lost focus of that goal. I say this to everyone, although it is most important for my younger cohorts. Demand a heterodoxic, curric heterodoxic curriculum. 
Pursue and encourage an environment that privileges viewpoint diversity above all else. I'm sure to think about what should happen should we fail to do so, or should we neglect our duty to greater understanding. The academy and the purpose it serves would cease to exist, instead replaced by yet another pseudo-religious tyrannical structure. I know this isn't a optimistic video. Um, it's hard to be optimistic in times like these. Earlier today I wrote a Facebook post, which, God, I'm trying to get away from Facebook as much as I can, but it's, it's impossible to extricate myself from it. Um, talking about how the professoriate has changed radically in the last 18 years. You know, we don't have as many Luann Smiths anymore. Paul Maltby's, um, I, I know Dr. Perry, Dr. Mary Perry's still working. Uh, Dr. Chuck Bauerlein, he retired as well. Bill Oliker, we don't have them anymore. They're replaced by uh, people that kind of push this ideological bubble. You know, um, it's important to pay attention to what's going on campus, folks. If you got children going into the university setting, uh, I'll repeat what I said last time. Stay involved. Uh, to students, remain open, even if someone has a position that you don't agree with. Uh, with that being said, I'm Ryan Wasser. I'll see you all next time.